Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, July 27th through Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. For this week's weekly reading, we'll be using the Syrian Starseed Tarot by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha for the main message for everyone. We also, also have a special card for everybody here from the Angels of Atlantis deck. So the Archangel that's overseeing the week will come from this deck here. And then your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this week, will be coming from the Star Temple Oracle deck by Susie Cherub. So let's start by taking a look at our stones of choice. By the way, this week takes us into a new month, the month of August. So be sure to also go onto my YouTube channel and watch the monthly angel card reading for the month of August. If it's not up yet, when you go on there, just keep checking back um, as it should be up by the 1st of August. So our stones of choice this week, and these are all bracelets here this week. We have the first stone of choice is carnelian. Isn't that a beautiful dark orange? carnelian stone. The carnelian is a stone that helps to restore vitality and motivation. So if you're lacking in motivation with moving forward, this might be your stone of choice. So helping to restore vitality and motivation, it helps to give you courage, it promotes positive life choices, and it helps you in trusting yourself as well as trusting your own perceptions. Of course, this relates to the sacral chakra, Sacral chakra is our center of passion and creative self-expression. Okay, second stone of choice is amber. And this is a, a darker golden amber, almost like an orange colored golden amber here. The amber is a stone that helps to absorb negative energies and it alleviates stress and depression. It helps to promote self-confidence, self-expression, and decision making. So if you need to make decisions about something, this might be a good stone for you this week. This also relates to the solar plexus chakra, and that is our center of personal power, where we might need to take back our power or empower ourselves in some situation. The last stone of choice is blue appetite. That's a beautiful blue color as well. So the blue appetite is for clarity, of concentration and clarity of communication helps to stimulate ideas and learning it's a stone of manifestation it helps with acceptance of how, how things are or acceptance of situations and circumstances in your life it also helps to connect you to high spiritual guidance and of course this relates to the throat chakra which is clear and authentic and honest communication and speech and even perhaps uh, ability to kind of channel through your words. So again, your stones of choice are the carnelian, the golden amber, or the blue appetite. So let's set that aside and let's talk a little bit about the astrology for the week. Now, it seems like both Venus and Mercury are highlighted this week and even the sun. And because all of these planets are personal planets, Venus, Mercury, and the Sun, they're all faster moving, called personal planets because they affect our personal everyday life with their energies. So we start out on Monday the 27th with Venus, the ruler of relationships, partnerships, personal resources, and finances. She's in the sign of Gemini, as she has been. And she's making what's called an inconjunct or quincunx aspect to Jupiter, the planet of blessings, the planet of our belief systems, and the planet that rules expansion. And Jupiter's in the sign of Capricorn, which is about our goals, ambitions, career, who we are out in the world, our sense of status, and working towards something, working towards our goals. Also on Monday, and I'm going to kind of put it all together at the end, but also Venus is in a challenging situation with Neptune that day. And Neptune rules the spiritual realm, illusion, confusion, delusion, but also magic and the imagination. But it is a challenging square aspect. Okay, And then also on that day, Mercury 
which is the, the planet of the mind, our thoughts, our ideas, and communication is in a challenging aspect to Mars, the warrior planet, in his own sign of Aries. Mars is an activator planet and likes to move forward um, with assertiveness. So what does all that mean on Monday? To me, there's a lot of things here that speak of uh, some challenging energies that need to be moved through. Okay, so again, we have we have two squares and we have an inconjunct. All of these are, are what's considered more difficult aspects. But with the difficult aspects, especially with the squares, the squares help to push us towards doing something. It pushes us towards making a decision or taking an action that we need to take. So even though there's challenge behind the square energy, it actually helps us to move forward. But if we think about this individually, we have Venus involved here with two of those connections. Venus is connecting to Jupiter. Venus is connecting to Neptune. So I feel like within partnerships and relationships, and even within money and finances and personal resources, we're needing to adjust our belief systems regarding what's happening, what's, uh, what's occurring around us. We need to also be able to see something with more clarity regarding those areas of our lives because the Neptune influence is going to cloud our judgment. It's like we're wearing rose-colored glasses when Venus squares Neptune. So we can't really understand fully or see again clearly what the truth is or we're looking at the fantasy of it all. So whether it's the fantasy of a relationship or the fantasy of a money situation, um, you know, again, this is a challenge because once the rose-colored glasses come off later, after that transit has passed in a couple of days, then we see the reality of the situation. There can be a lot of confusion with Venus connecting to Neptune in relationships and in money situations. Venus being in Gemini vacillates in her ideas or thoughts because Gemini is the sign of the twins, and so there's you know, a vacillation here between two or more thoughts or ideas or plans or uh, decisions. So there's, again, this kind of uh, lack of clarity or confusion. The, the Venus with the Jupiter is saying that we need to, again, expand or adjust our perceptions and how we're perceiving something within the money finance situation or within the relationship partnership situation. And again, there might be more than one path or more than one choice because Venus is in Gemini again. So we might be sort of at a crossroads and just kind of uncertain uh, what decision to make or what direction to go. Jupiter likes to expand energy so it could expand that confusion, but it could also expand the potential probabilities and opportunities that come along with Venus and Gemini. So it's just a matter of being able to weigh the pros and cons and, and being able to maybe wait it out if you can to gain a little bit more clarity about what's going on. And then of course that Mercury squaring Mars can be troublesome communication. There could be challenges um, in communication with other people. We might be more emotionally sensitive because Mercury is, is in the empathic sensitive sign of Cancer. Um, these communications might be within home and family matters because cancer rules home and family. And again, Mars in Aries is more of the assertive, self-confident, warrior type of energy. So people just in general might have more of a, oh, kind of a fighting sort of tone. You know, their, their words, they might be impatient or they might kind of snap back without thinking because Mars kind of has that very direct, impatient, um, speak, you know, or do quickly kind of energy to it. So again, this is all in the realm of our thoughts, ideas, and communications with Mercury there. And then we're going to skip all the way to Thursday the 30th. <clears throat> On Thursday the 30th, we have two things happening with uh, Mercury and one thing happening with Venus again. So Mercury is opposing Jupiter at this time. So we had Venus in a conflicting energy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm so sorry there. I should have paused the video, but didn't get to it in time. Um, Mercury is the planet again of the mind. 
which we just talked about in a challenging aspect with Mars on Monday. Now on Thursday, Mercury is going to be opposing Jupiter. Jupiter, again, likes to expand, and it does rule our belief systems and our higher perceptions. And so there's definitely something here going on with expanding our perceptions about something, adjusting our belief systems, or seeing a different or opposing belief system. And it doesn't mean you have to accept the differing or opposing belief system, but we should at least be open to listening because it might be in some sort of communication or conversation with other people here that somebody is giving us their perspective on something. So we should at least be open and allowing of listening to their perspective because that's going to allow for the best kind of flow of communication to occur and to happen. Mercury then goes on and it makes a positive connection to Neptune. Now this is one of the only real positive connections that's happening this week. <clears throat> and again, Neptune on a positive side can rule the spirit realm, imagination, um, fantasy. It can rule creative, you know, kind of creative uh, vision, if you will. And Mercury being the planet of the mind, this can be a very creative aspect for like creative writing, uh, creative speaking, there can be a, an easy, wonderful flow of communications with other people around that time. Mercury being in Cancer, again, it highlights home and family matters. And maybe we just have more of this unconditionally loving, compassionate, Neptunian energy. I also want to say this is going to heighten our intuition and our psychic abilities. Because Mercury is in a water sign, Cancer, which is very empathic. Neptune is in a water sign, his home sign of Pisces, which is very psychic and very intuitive and since mercury rules the mind um, and our ability to communicate with this connection with neptune we might actually be able to to channel information whether that's actually a spiritual channel whether that's like writing out ideas or coming up with ideas and writing them down or whether that's just communicating with others and just kind of things are flowing things are flowing because we're actually in an open channeled space with spirit, with our angels and guides. And then on, also on Thursday, Venus, uh, is still in Gemini, is in that quincunx or in conjunct aspect with Pluto. She was in that aspect with Jupiter on Monday, now she's in that aspect with Pluto on Thursday. The quincunx or the in conjunct is about an adjustment of energies that needs to be made. Because the two signs that are involved in the situation are usually at odds with one another, or they don't blend very easily, okay? Because here we have Venus and Gemini, and Gemini is an air sign about thoughts and intellect, ideas. It's that realm of the mental realm, right? And Pluto, and where Jupiter was on Monday when Venus connected with Jupiter, Jupiter and Pluto are both in Capricorn, which is much more materialistic, grounded, practical, goal-oriented. Um, you know, let's, let's make something happen on the third dimensional plane, not the mental realm, but the physical realm. So the mental realm of Gemini and the physical realm of the Earth realm or physical realm of Capricorn do not blend the best. So here with Venus and Pluto on Thursday, there needs to be an adjustment made again. The adjustment might need to be made in... Um, our ideas, our thoughts. We might need to empower ourselves in some way through communication with others. And maybe it's uncomfortable for us, or maybe it feels a little foreign to us with that in conjunct there. So we need to kind of adjust our own energies internally to take our power back or to own our power, speak our words with confidence, and allow, you know, transformation within ourselves to take place. And the transformation can also come through what it is that you're communicating as well. And again, Venus rules relationships, and she rules personal resources, including money and finances. So there might be something empowering there happening for you on Thursday with that. On Friday the 31st, the sun, being in the sign of Leo right now, <clears throat> is in a positive connection to Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. Now, this is a positive connection, the sun trining Chiron. However, Chiron is the wounded healer, and the sun highlights, it shines its light upon something. So here the sun is shining its light through the lens of Leo, which is creative self-expression and self-confidence and, 
your you know leadership ability that's all leo and it's shining its light through that lens of leo and connecting with chiron which is bringing up wounds of our sense of self self-identity take charge ability so leo and aries have some similarities there so with with the sun connecting with chiron it could be that we you know had some wounds or have some wounds regarding our sense of self or our courage or confidence in some way shape or form but it's going to be maybe a little easier to move through that it's going to be a little easier for us to feel more secure within ourselves to express ourselves perhaps to express our independence to express our leadership um, ability to express our creativity in whatever form it's taking so that's a positive um, a positive thing right there on Saturday, we now move into the 1st of August, which of course is a new energy. So now the, the energy is shifting from July's energy to August energy. But on Saturday the 1st, we have Mercury and Cancer. Yet again, Mercury is highlighted. And now Mercury is opposing Pluto. So on Thursday, Mercury was opposing Jupiter. Now it's opposing Pluto. So again, we're going to have communications, conversations, interactions with other people, perhaps mostly in the area of home and family, or just, again, real sensitive, empathic, or intuitive uh, communications and interactions with other people where we need to transform ourselves or transform a situation or empower ourselves or take our power back. Because again, we're dealing with Pluto here. Pluto brings up death and rebirth energies. And so there could be um, something taking place here that's allowing us to communicate in a more empowered way. So it's releasing an old way of thinking or perceiving or communicating and coming into a new and empowered way. And then on Sunday the 2nd, the sun in Leo is now challenging Uranus in Taurus. So this is interesting because Uranus rules freedom it rules uniqueness, it rules sudden and unexpected energies, things that happen out of the blue. Uranus rules innovation, it rules uh, the strange and unusual, the atypical, it rules beating to the beat of your own drum, you know, again, bringing in all of that freedom, break free from energy. So the sun squaring Uranus might be breaking us free from something breaking us free from any situation or circumstance because you never know what's going to happen with Uranus or where, you know, how it's going to affect you. Uranus is, of course, in Taurus, but it's going to be in Taurus for about, you know, seven years, another six years, seven years is what it spends in each sign of the zodiac. And Taurus is all about money matters and our personal resources and our values and the sun being in Leo, and we already said Leo is about our sense of ego and, and independence and creative self-expression and leadership ability. So whatever is happening is maybe on a personality level. People might be, again, a little bit more abrupt. They might be, do strange and unusual things or things out of character. They might suddenly shift or free themselves from something that's going on in their lives and, and just decide that, you know, enough's enough and I'm, I'm done with this. Or they might come up with new and innovative ideas or a new creative project. Of course, this is a challenging aspect between the two. So whatever happens, it may come through feeling like it's a little bit more on the challenging side. But usually, usually if we're breaking free from something, it's because it's not in our highest and best interest to be connected to it anymore. So let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides here from the Syrian Starseed Tarot. And turning over the first card, we have ooh, the Five of Orbs. This is like the Five of Swords. In the traditional tarot the sword suit is all about the mind our thoughts our ideas our communications the number five numerologically speaks of sometimes chaos or confusion sometimes multitasking or having a lot of things happen all at the same time all at once the fives also are a number of freedom as well here we see a person or the image of something it doesn't really have a face on it so there's kind of either a mask over or again, there's no, no like sight or perception here, but they're juggling five orbs. Two of the orbs are actually on the ground. The other three are still up in the air and still being juggled by this um, energy, this person. 
So this to me, and you can see there's dark clouds in the background, there's fog, you know, around here on the ground. So again, there's a lack of clarity about something. The light is not shining through here. So we're having some confusion, some darkness, some despair, some lack of clarity, not seeing something clearly. And that not seeing something clearly is also indicated by this person not having a face, not having eyes to see, you know, wearing a mask, if you will. So there's no ability to kind of see or sense or understand or perceive where those other orbs are, you know, what the, what the other thoughts are all about, what the ideas are all about, what possible decisions could be made, what, what the pros and cons are. So again, this is about chaos, chaos um, with confusion, con you know, confusion with communication, um, chaos in our own mind with our own thoughts, having too many things kind of flow through our minds so that we can't really focus uh, intellectually or mentally, we can't focus on something. So there's just a lot of, um, you know, uh, difficulty here. And this, you know, this goes along with the Venus and Gemini at the beginning of the week and connecting with Neptune. So there's illusion and confusion. Mercury, of course, the planet of, of the mental realm is in that difficult aspect with Mars, the warrior, where there could be fighting words, fighting communications, which this could also uh, indicate as well um, as the traditional Five of Swords would be. So this is, this is how, you know, this, the week is starting out. But let's go ahead and take a look at the next card, which actually came out as two cards. And let's see what the progression of the week looks like. So if we turn over the first of the two cards that came out for the second card, we see the adept of orbs so we're we're still in the orb suit we're still in the sword suit we're still in the realm of the mind with our thoughts and ideas the adept is the knight in this particular deck so we have the knight of swords the knight of swords you know the knight as far as the um court cards are concerned you have pages knights queens and then kings the kings are the most mature and the queens are mature as well, but just the divine feminine instead of the divine masculine like the king. The pages are the least mature. In fact, sometimes they're a very immature energy or childlike energy, or sometimes when you get a page, it does indicate children. Um, pages are also about messages or mes you know, messenger energy. The adept or the knight is about the energy of... Um, it's like not quite mature, but not, it's like growing up kind of thing. If you think about a knight, you know, like the white knight on the horse, he's usually young and gallant. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of conviction, but he doesn't have a lot of wisdom and he doesn't have a lot of experience yet. Not like the queen and the king. So the knight of swords here is about having thoughts and ideas and communicating in such a way that he might be a little... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, impatient. He might be a little quick to thought or quick to come up with an idea or quick to say something in response to someone else's communication without thinking things through. Now in this particular card, actually he's sitting down, which a lot of times you see the knights on a horse and galloping forward wildly. Um, this knight or this adept is sitting on a rock and actually holding a ball or a sphere that has actually has the knight on the horse within it. So this almost gives us the idea that this knight maybe is just a little bit more stable. He's got the vision of himself, if you will, galloping forward wildly on the horse because that's the vision that he's holding in this kind of ball of light, if you will. But he himself is actually sitting solid and grounded on a rock or on a cliff next to a tree. So he's not galloping on a horse, he's not running, he's not moving, he's sitting. Almost like he's in contemplation a little bit, which is a very different kind of energy than you typically see for the Knight of Swords. So I want to say that with the ideas, with the thoughts, and even with our communications with others, we do have the capacity to stay grounded. We have the capacity to, to be focused if we adjust our perceptions, if we adjust how we see things or perceive things. If we think before we speak, we can communicate in a more focused, logical way. And, you know, this would be indicated um, perhaps on, on Thursday as we near Thursdays, Mercury opposing Jupiter. 
to where there's this again expanded perception or different way of seeing thing and maybe this knight is actually seeing himself in both realities he's at, he's seeing himself sitting there more grounded and focused but he's also seeing himself in the possibilities as he's holding this kind of crystal ball of light with him galloping forward with one of his ideas or with one of his thoughts or making the decision and just moving forward with it so i feel like this is saying to us that we might have a lot of good thoughts and maybe we need to make a decision, but maybe we just need to sit for a few seconds, a couple minutes, and contemplate and be focused and practical and grounded about what it is that we want to take action on as far as these thoughts and ideas before actually doing so. But let's go ahead and take a look at this next card that came out with it. Maybe this will give us more information about it. Okay, we have the Seeker of orbs okay the seeker of orbs so we're still in the orb suit we've had the five of orbs the adept of orbs now the seeker of orbs the seeker in this deck is the page and we just talked about the page being a young energy okay but the pages are also about messages they're the messengers and this is about messages coming in on the mental realm messages coming in in regards to your thoughts and your ideas so based on the fact that it's following the adept of orbs and what we just said about the adept of orbs, I feel like if you sit a moment in contemplation about some of the possibilities and where you might want to go with this higher vision of things, then I feel like the messages are going to come in. You're going to get a, an answer to your query, so to speak. The answer could come from another person. The answer could come from you know a billboard a song um you know within a situation some a conversation that you overhear the message could also come from within yourself your own higher self or from your guides and angels somehow which of course comes in through all those other various ways that we talked about so this is about seeking the message being open to the message and you see this person she's a young young girl here as i said the pages are usually young and she's looking for something she actually has a light in her hand and she's almost like moving through a cave so she's seeking it's almost like that light is lighting her way as she's seeking either the exit or the entrance further into the cave either way she's looking for something and seeking something so here I feel like you're seeking the answers to some questions that you might have in some area or areas of your life. And if you just sit like the adept long enough for a few moments in focused meditation, perhaps that idea, the answer, the message will come to you through the seeker of orbs. Okay, so let's take a look at the last card here. Okay, we have a flames card. I was wondering if we were gonna get another orbs card, but we have the nine of flames. This is like the nine of wands in the traditional tarot. Wands or flames are fire. It's about spirit, energy, action, okay? The nine is the last of the single digits, but not the last of the minor arcana. We actually have in the minor arcana, the ace, which is the one through 10. And then we go to the court card. So the nine is the second to the last of the minor arcana. So we're getting towards the end of something. We're getting towards some completion energy regarding something, okay? And it's again in the realm of creative self-expression, uh, spirit, energy, action, forward movement. But look at this uh, man in the nine of flames. He's standing still. He's got a bandage around his head like he's been through a battle of some sort, like maybe he's wounded. It's almost like he's, you know, for the moment is resting and, and has had enough. But yet he's standing with this flame in his hand and with the eight other flames in the background, which are in front of a pyramid, by the way. Um, pyramids, to me, can be a source of, of power and wisdom and ancient uh, energy or ancient guidance, right? And the flames are spirit. The flames are um, the spiritual realm or creative self-expression or leadership or independence. And it's almost like he's, again, getting to the end of something, but he's resting for the moment. He's recuperating his energies. He's, he's needing to, again, rest from whatever battle he's been through. But yet he's taking a stand. He's not letting anybody through. He's kind of like guarding the pyramid, almost. He's guarding that that ancient wisdom and knowledge. He's guarding that power, and that might be his own personal power. 
Perhaps he's guarding his own personal power with these flames. And the pyramid is, again, um, indicative of that powerful, ancient energy that's within him. Okay? So I feel like, um, you know, with all of the things going on this week, and, and there is quite a few things that we're going to have some personal ups and downs, we're going to be seeking some answers, maybe in the beginning of the week, especially having some lack of clarity, but needing to kind of focus and ground ourselves long enough to seek the answers that we're looking for. And maybe this is about taking a pause before moving forward. Maybe, again, we're nearing the end of some long journey or long, if you want to call it a, a battle of some sort, before we're able to then continue our journey towards that powerful pyramid, which is the empowering of ourselves, taking back our power, empowering ourselves, um, taking back our, our ancient wisdom, so to speak, which also the pyramid can be indicative of. So let's go ahead and take a look at the archangel that comes in for everyone for the week from this card here. Okay, we have Archangel Sandalphon. And Archangel Sandalphon, this says intention at the bottom. And this person is standing almost in a yoga pose, a prayer pose, um, at dusk near the ocean. We have a beautiful ball of that golden yellow and orange light, which is funny since a couple of my stones of choice are orange and, and golden yellow which again relates to your creative self-expression, your passion, your self-confidence, your self-identity, and your personal power. So Sandalphon, Archangel Sandalphon, carries our prayers, if you will, or our intentions up to heaven to be made manifest. And again, this person is almost as if they're praying, they're standing still. Again, there's no action being taken, just like the adept of orbs. If you can still yourself long enough, Go into contemplation long enough or into prayer or meditation long enough to receive the answers that you're seeking. Sending out positive intentions, quieting down the mind from that five of orbs card that we had at the, at the beginning of the, the week. If we can be in that centered space of realization that we are one with God, source, energy, universe, and as we send out our positive visualizations and intentions, and as we, you know, gain our sense of self-confidence and power and passion for wanting to move forward and make the best decisions possible for ourselves, then I, yeah, I believe that that is what's going to happen here. So call an Archangel Sandalphon to assist with your intentions, to assist with your prayers and bringing them into manifestation form, bringing them into reality. Archangel Sandalphon also, to me, kind of deals with with music um music as a form of prayer music as a form of ritual you know having like uh Af like mantras or um meditating to certain you know music um etc so that might be part of calling an archangel sandalphon this week as well okay so let's take a look at your special message card depending on your stone of choice so i'm gonna take a deep breath here Center and ground for a moment. And shuffle the cards. This is going to be for the Carnelian people, those that chose Carnelian. Special message for Carnelian. What's the special message this week for Carnelian? Okay, this one's definitely popped up when I opened my eyes up. Didn't realize that. It says, the triple star grid, a line. I connect and align with my higher consciousness. This is beautiful because this week, with all the energies going on, we might get caught up a little bit in the ego mind or the lower mind because Mercury is involved here, which is the lower mind. Venus is in Gemini, which vacillates back and forth in the ego mind and thoughts and decisions. So again, if you quiet the mind and sit alone in contemplation, meditation, prayer, intention, this is where you're going to be able to align. This is what needs to be done for you to align, to quiet the mind and to receive the answers that you're seeking, receive the messages that you're looking for. And again, it says, I connect and align with my higher consciousness. This beautiful woman has um, a beautiful 
kind of crown of, I don't know if that's jewels or flowers or ferns or something around her third eye, but it definitely has that wonderful, you know, blue color, not as dark blue as the third eye would normally be, but that color blue on the third eye is helping to expand her vision, to expand, expand her intuitive and psychic perception here. She's kind of holding a ball uh, of, you know, again, kind of bluish light here in front of her as well. It almost reminds me of planet Earth. This could be have something to do too with um, aligning yourself with the purpose on the planet. I think about your, you know, your earthly purpose, your life purpose on this earth plane and needing to align again with whatever that purpose is. And again, how do you do that is through, first of all, that throat chakra blue energy of speaking your truth. But before even speaking your truth, you have to align with the um, authentic ideas that are aligned with your higher soul self. And again, that third eye perception, um, that intuitive psychic perception, that vision of what that is, what you need to align with. You just really, you just need to simply align with your truth, align with your truth and your true authentic self and all else will fall into place. Okay. So whatever your um, purposes on the planet or whatever decisions you might need to make, if you just align with your truth, be honest with yourself and align with your authentic self, then again, everything else will fall into place for you. Okay. That was again, the triple star grid. Okay, now we're going to choose the special message card for the amber people. Amber people, special message for amber. Special message for amber people. I'm not seeing anything pop out yet. I'm opening my opening my eyes on occasion. Okay, this one actually, as soon as I open my eyes on top here, we have the Huntress, and it says Quest. At the bottom it says, the Pleiades light my quest to be wild and free. So obviously some of you here that shows Amber might be associated with the Pleiades star system or the Pleiadians, star brothers and sisters of the light in some way. And again, we have the Huntress and kind of the quest, following the quest, heeding the call of the quest. Um, the Pleiades light my quest to be wild and free. So definitely you have a theme here of free, freedom, freedom, huntress, freedom, you know, warrior energy here is the huntress. So you're needing to really, I feel like that, that Mars energy with Mercury on Monday um, might sit in, and again to the, the sun with Uranus, planet of freedom. There's something where you're taking action, freeing yourself, looking for something, being warrior-like, you know, just making something happen. This is you making something happen. This is you questing for something bigger, brighter, greater. And you're taking action and moving towards it. You're not just surrendering and allowing and letting it come to you. This is you taking charge and um, kind of aiming your arrow. I just had to look at the card again. She's aiming her arrow at something. So whatever it is, whatever your intention is, aim your arrow towards that intention shoot that arrow towards that intention, take an action towards your intention, make a movement towards your intention, no matter how small it is, no matter how small the action is. So any movement for you as the warrior to free yourself from a situation, to free yourself from an old energy or belief system or way of living, it's time for you to do that now. It's time for you to, again, heed the call of the quest and free yourself you know, take on and call in those of the highest vibration of light, the star brothers and sisters um, from the Pleiadian star system, I feel like are definitely helping you this particular week. Okay. And then for those of you that chose the blue appetite, blue appetite, special message for blue appetite. Okay, I'm confused because the one on the bottom feels like it wants to come out, but so does that one. So I'm going to keep shuffling because to me, if I'm confused between two or three cards, and if that one was meant to be, it'll come back around. So blue appetite people, 
special message, blue appetite. Okay, this one's popping up. Blue appetite, people. Ooh, the priestess. The priestess, and it says embody. I am an embodiment of the divine feminine. So the previous, the huntress quest card was very divine masculine. This one for the blue appetite people, it's very divine feminine. The priestess, she's, in a, she's holding her hands in prayer in front of her heart chakra or and even her throat chakra. She's got her eyes closed. And it actually says, I am an embodiment of the divine feminine. So what does that mean, the divine feminine? It's actually about, it's you know definitely um, an energy of power. The priestess has a lot of power. But her power lies in more of this being receptive and being allowing and being creative and being loving and nurturing and magical. But yet she's still holding her power too. It's almost like a cross between the masculine and feminine here because the priestess definitely has power. You can see she's surrounded by the universal night sky. Um, she's got, you know, she's definitely wearing this beautiful kind of gown. She's got a beautiful kind of headdress. The headdress um, has this beautiful amethyst colored purple at the crown chakra. So we know she's opening up to higher wisdom, higher knowledge. And she's allowing, you know, again, that receptivity of the divine feminine. She's allowing that higher wisdom and higher knowledge to be channeled through her. That is her power to be able to channel forth that divine wisdom and knowledge, to channel through her the answers that she's seeking, to channel through her the magic that she's embodying within this priestess energy to kind of create her own reality. The priestess creates her reality through magic, but not always direct masculine um, force or assertion. Okay, it's about almost, again, balancing the two through her vision, through her intention, through her prayer, um, through allowing, again, universal energies to flow through her. That's where her magic lies. That's where her power lies. So in and of itself, that is an action to be able to embody that powerful divine feminine energy as the priestess is your magic for this week. Mm, beautiful. Okay, so I hope you've all liked this weekly angel card reading. Um, thank you all so much again for those who support me in different ways through your lovely kind words and comments. Some of you are leaving wonderful testimonials for um, not just my videos, but also for the services, the readings, the healing sessions and whatnot that I do. Um, some of you, uh, if you want to sign up for my monthly newsletter, please feel free. Go on my website and sign up for that. You'll get a monthly newsletter that has various information, things about upcoming classes, sometimes some uh, discounts for some of my services. Thank you for those of you that, uh, again, uh, send in your um, gifts in various forms. I appreciate whatever the gift is. Um, and some of those gifts are just, again, your lovely words of support. And I appreciate that just as much as well. And I want to send you all much love and light as we move into this new month of August. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the new month of August uh, unfolds for us in this time on our planet, uh, in these months that we've been through and where we seem to be going. Um, it's an interesting unfolding unlike any time that I think any of us have probably lived in our lives to have something so worldwide happening uh, universally speaking but it's an opportunity to bring positive change and evolution and growth both both on a personal as well as a collective level so until we meet again, sending you lots of love and light and many, many angel blessings, everyone.